G'day viewers, we've got Spirit of Steam on West Cornwall Local as a new DLC pack. What you basically get is four new locomotive skins, and you get the 6P Jubilee in green, it's the same one from Spirit of Steam, the 6P Jubilee in VR black with red lining and, the, and a festive version of it, the 6P Jubilee in LMS crimson and a festive version of that one, Red Coaches and the Blood and Custard Coaches. You get four new full route services that can be run with any of the four trains. Apart from the liveries, the steam engines themselves are largely the same. The changes you see here in the cab are on the back head of the boiler. There's a speedometer in miles an hour. The speedometer is a little bit weird, I don't quite like it. It includes the bracket for the steam pressure gauge and the cables or lines, whatever they are coming out of it, actually go through the steam pressure gauge. So I would have thought they should go up behind that perhaps. The welcome edition is AWS, which you can turn on with the switch and acknowledge with the big button. Uh, that's a welcome addition to be able to run the locomotive on a rail tool or basis on the more modern routes. The green ones doesn't have this because it has to operate in Spirit of Steam, obviously, but the black and crimson ones both have AWS and the speedometer, which are nice additions. Delivery is really nice on both the black and the crimson. We'll see the crimson in a moment. So the black is a, a nice BR black with the British Rail Lion on the tender and a red pinstriping with some grey accents, which I, I think is really pretty. The re reflectivity of the livery is actually really nice when you're driving along. There's one thing that bugs me though, and that's this. Rusty motion gear. This simply wouldn't happen on a preserved locomotive on rail tour duty or a preserved locomotive on a preserved line. They looked up and much better than this, that just no one would let the motion go rusty like this. The other livery in the pack is this very nice LMS Crimson with a yellow lining. It comes both with and without the festive light show editions. These sort of light shows are actually quite common on preserved railways and preserved rail tours these days, and they, as they attract a new element of the public to come and ride the trains. Now, I quite like the livery in crimson. I think that's really nice. Again, you know, the motion gear, I could do without that. I really could. The lighting itself on the train is pretty cool on the locomotive. The lighting on the carriages... I'm not so enamoured with, to be honest with you, because these loose strings would just belt around in the wind when you got up to any kind of speed and they would destroy themselves and probably break the windows and wreck the paint really quickly. So I'm not so much of a fan of the lighting here. I think this could have been done differently. To run the services, you just use the route as usual, West Coast Local, and drop into services, and then you'll see there's a steam engine here. In this menu, you can only see one, but you can choose all the other liveries. So there's the LMS Jubilee Black, the LMS Jubilee Crimson, LMS Jubilee Crimson Festive, and LMS Jubilee Black Festive. Now, you might have noticed just a little bit of an error there. It's actually BR for the black ones. That's okay. Let's jump in. Uh, we will, yeah, let's do this one. 10.55 in the morning, March is fine, clear is fine. Let's jump in and get started. Actually, I don't want dynamic weather because I don't want the weather to change on us. So we'll just jump into this one and I will talk about the scenarios. First up, let's get ready to go. So we have our erstwhile firing person over here with plenty of water in the boiler. Uh, I'll keep the large ejector closed for the moment. Let's turn on AWS and acknowledge. And the next thing I want to do is pop out the front because we need to pop on some lamps. I'm not really fussed about the lamp codes. I'm just going to put on two white ones. But I want to put on a head plate. You've got two to choose from. You can have the Cornishman, which has got this little uh, figurine on the top there, or you can have the Cornish Riviera Express. I'm going to go the Cornishman, because I like it. All right. We are right to get out of here, so let's check our cylinder cocks are open. Let's bring our reverser. We don't really need to go into full forward gear. There's no point. Release the brakes. Again, we don't need the large ejector because we're just an engine. And let's get a bit of action happening. The 
pop the uh, steam engine sound up a little bit, kicking it low because the safety valve is going off. Delivery does look quite nice. You've got to be a little bit careful on this service because the signal that we're heading for, you almost have to stop on top of it. Heading right over onto the car track, which I get that the stopping points and the like, but uh, I think I would have preferred this to be a little bit different because as a real railway person, we don't waste effort like this running this far away to do a shunting activity. Is that going to be close enough? No, 15 yards, a little bit further to go. And you can see what I mean about how close we have to actually get to this signal. 10 yards, that doesn't look like 10 yards to me. Seven should do. Let's just stop there. Yep, seven is fine. All right, let's come back into reverse gear now. We'll just start moving off. And as soon as I start moving, I want to tab and ask permission. There we go. Now I need to start moving before I tab and ask permission because the game needs to know what direction you're going. And again, I didn't go into full reverse gear, there's no point, because we are just light locomotives at this point in the game. The steam emission hasn't changed, it's the same as it was in Spirit of Steam. Physics is the same, and the way you drive is the same. What has changed though is this route has much more um, variety in terms of gradients than Spirit of Steam. So you'll actually have to be on your game as a driver. And I find that quite engaging. Once we get onto our train I'll talk about the uh, new scenarios that come up. to our platform now. So there are particular ways that you're going to have to drive this thing that are just a little bit different to what you're probably used to on Spirit of Steam. If you notice a lot of cab sway, it's because I have my settings on 200% because I like it because it's realistic. For those of you who don't know, I do operate on the Steam display. Bring that to a stop before we get to the train. Switch cameras and then pop down here to observe the coupling. Now, before we get into that, we do have to drop the Buckeye and extend the buffers. So we can get in here now. Brakes off. And you certainly don't want to hit these too hard because you'll bounce off. So start braking just before you hit it and you should be... Well, maybe that was a little too early. There we go. Duck in and do the manual coupling. Now we have to go all the way down the back and uncouple the one at the back down here. There's 150 sitting over there in the other platform. And there's a 37 that brought our carriage set in, so we have to get rid of that. There we go. Hop up into the front, let's get the doors open, so all of our people can get in. Enjoy their nice day down at the beach. Now just while we are loading up passengers, there are six new scenarios with this pack. They are reviving history where you get to run from Penzance to St Austell with there's some light engine movement, some shunting and some photo stops. There's Royal Service where you use the 37 to shunt the coaches and bring them into the station and then put the steam engine on. 
There's cooling off steam, which is starting at St Ives. You run light engine backwards to relieve a train unable to ascend the hill and then park up in Truro. Old troubles with modern solutions to avoid a break down, broken down 150. You need to set back with your steamer and do a fairly tricky hill start in the snow and then run the wrong line before completing your service and arriving home for Christmas when you're in the festive livery and you're running from St Austell to Penzance with photo stops. So the scenarios do have some, some challenge and some engagement to them. I actually find them kind of fun. I'm not going to show any of them on this first thoughts video because I uh, don't want to ruin them for you, to be honest. All right, let's get back in the cab. Doors shut, ready to go. Get into full forward gear because we've got a train on now. Fix the brakes. Large ejector open to build our vacuum through the train. Bit of a whistle. And away we go. Just a gentle start here. Come over to the shiny side. need to go too hard out of here because we have got rather a low speed limit coming out of the uh, station area here, heading up the hill to St Earth. But we are going to have to build up some decent speed just to get up the hill into St Earth. So while we're travelling out of here, let's have a bit of a chat about some of the things. So I think the scenarios are good. The scenarios for me make this worth the cash because um, the skins, yeah, you could actually do them in Creators Club if you wanted to. There actually is quite a nice LMS group Crimson in Creators Club with the yellow lining. Um, I've done this British Railways one with black and the red stripes because this is the most familiar to me. Um, granted, I'm an Aussie, never saw them in real life, but did have a, a Hornby model. I've actually got, I don't think it's 45690, but it is uh, in this range. And it's one of the few HO models that I actually kept because I quite like it and I like the black and red livery. So there are some things that I really do like about this. The fact that AWS has been introduced into the locomotives means that we can now run them on the more modern routes. And it's time to crank this old girl. Get out of here. I think the scenarios are imaginative and interesting. They're quite good gameplay. The snow on the palm trees is pretty funny. When we're down at the beach, are you really going to get a lot of snow down here? I don't think so, but for the festive ones, you'll see some snow. The route has some fairly steep gradients, and the long, heavy trains that you have, they're not massive, but they're not short either. Um, they will actually give you some challenge. A little bit more challenge than driving on Spirit of Steam, I think. There's only one gradient on Spirit of Steam, and that's coming into one of the yards. Around here, they're quite normal, so you're just going to have to get used to it, I'm afraid. And you're going to have to learn how to drive on a gradient. Now, that said, it's, it's not hard. You just need to plan, and you need to make sure you're doing the right speed before you get to the gradient. You need to make sure you've got the steam left. So right now, I'm using tons, but we're going to go downhill soon to help us accelerate, and I'll be able to throttle back a little bit. There are some things I'd like to see change. I would love to see that speedometer redone. To me, that's just a bit... It's just not right. It works, yeah, but it doesn't look right. It's not really hate it, but... The... All the liveries have dirty, rusty motion gear. And to me... Again, it doesn't make me hate it, but I really don't like it. I do not like dirty gear on a preserved logo because it's simply wouldn't happen. The LMS Crimson locomotive, granted I'm running an early access build for the purposes of looking at this and, and telling you about it, uh, the LMS Crimson locomotive at this time doesn't support rail driver. The black one does, the crimson one doesn't, which is a bit disappointing for me. The festive black one isn't available in Scenario Planner, it's only available in the timetable. I'd like to have it, 
I'd like to run a Fescu Crimson and a Fescu Black at the same time. That'd be cool. There's our AWS. Don't need to acknowledge that though. It's a green signal. As we go flying up the hill towards St. Earth. Or is it St. Earth? I've never really figured that out. You get the red coaches, you also get the blood and custard, I've seen those turn up too. The route itself is unchanged because it is only a locomotive and train DLC. There are the four new services and they're, they're full route services that can run from end to end. Full route services that don't really stop anywhere aren't my cup of tea, I like stopping trains so I actually appreciate the effort they've gone to in the scenarios to introduce some things like photo stops. I like the um, different gameplay in the scenarios, things like running light engine, light engine backwards, um, doing shunting, using the 37 to build up your train before you put the steam engine on it. Interestingly, you actually build up this service that we're running now with the 37. Um, I quite like things like that. I think that's cool. So if I was shelling out my hard-earned cash on this, would I? I think I would. I think I would actually buy it. Uh, the steam engines to me, it's really nice to have some additional livery opportunities. It's, I particularly appreciate having AWS, that, that's a bonus. Because uh, that means we can run on more modern routes. It just feels more bright. I would like to see a train radio go in there though. There's a, a train running in preservation on a modern main line. We'd actually have a train radio set up in there and we don't get that. That would have to go away from the back end, obviously. It would have to be battery power. Because these ones don't have the stones, they don't have a generator. I do appreciate that in the uh, scenarios, we do actually end up with people in the characters. That's kind of cool. It's a nice change. running up the hill but sometime around this bridge up here this gradient actually stops so uh, we don't need to slow down. Just close my regulator and pop the cylinder box open. That just drags all the steam out of the cylinders to stop everything. A light brake application now. Even though we are a fair way away, and it's a steam engine, it doesn't stop real fast. Having this speedometer would actually make it sound like the HUD, if you felt like it. You still don't have any new firing modes, so to be honest with you, what it says on the HUD about how much speed you're generating and not generating, Not going to do a lot for you, really. I do like the reflectivity of delivery. I still don't like the safety valve, it goes up a little too easily for my mind. all the rest of the way in, just up here on the platform. Enjoy it coming in. Oh, did it stop? That's tedious. It did, did stop. All right, let's get moving again, bring it the rest of the way into the platform. Oh, you know why it stopped? Because I didn't open the large ejector again. So when I released the brakes then, 
it continued to slow down rather a lot. Wrong button, Jimmy. When I'd open the door, I just chopped that up from my level of cleverness today. Right then, I think this is probably where we will leave this one. So, from a first thought perspective, yeah, it's pretty good. There's a couple of things that are a bit weird, but uh, nothing that really detracts from its operation or, for me, makes it to a point that I don't like it, so yeah, I'd be happy. Um, I would definitely like to see the motion change. Um, I do want to see rail driver support for their LMS Crimson livery. Uh, it's a little bit strange to me that their two liveries are actually different trains, so they can obviously configured differently, but they seem to work the same when you drive them. We'll just get away from this safety valve. It is a bit noisy here. As we sit down here at St Ives, once we get our passengers loaded, we'll send them on their way and we'll finish this video. Doors closed. Box open. Brakes off. We do need to pop into the cab and just pop the large ejector open. And then we'll uh, come back and sit over here again. Watch her leave. Away we go. Alrighty, if you've got any comments, uh, chuck them down below and we can have a bit of a chat. Quite enjoy the scenario pack. Um, it's good to have the changed locomotives and it's good to have some more variety for West Coast Local. Alright then, thanks heaps for watching. Let me know what you think of it and see you later. Bye now.